Corruption is a loaded term, and it is difficult to formulate a comprehensive definition. However, in the assessment of whether a state of affairs may be corrupt, there has to be an implicit reference to some ideal. In a democracy, there should exist an expectation that decisions by those elected to govern are made in the best interest of all citizens and that the decision-making process is devoid of bias and or the facilitation of insular concerns. The practice of quid pro quo is an ancient one but the legal system is well aware of it. The legal concept imposes a standard which requires the rejection of any circumstance by virtue of which an office holder, in exchange for money received, effects a decision or takes some action adverse to those whom he or she is called to serve and in favor of those who have paid him or her. If elected officials, because of monies which have been received either directly via the receipt of cash or indirectly by the payment of campaign expenses, are influenced to act contrary to the obligations imposed upon them by their oath of office, such a course of action amounts to a subversion of the democratic process. In equal measure, the use of state enterprise coffers by incumbent governments to fund election-related expenses has to be rejected. Ultimately, there has to be a catharsis in our collective attitudes, as this society can ill afford to continue its acceptance of situations where the interests of those who inject capital into political campaigns persistently takes precedence over the public interest. The issue of campaign finance regulation has been a topic of national debate for some time, and concerns may be voiced that freedom of expression, as well as the right to political association and expression, should never be circumvented or restricted compromised or curtailed. However, society's interest in preventing corruption or the appearance of corruption, in my view, outweighs the limits which may be imposed upon the said rights by the enactment of campaign finance regulation. The court must always act as the guardian of the public interest and in defense of the Constitution. Consequently, a no-tolerance approach has to be adopted when it is evident that moneyed interests may have undermined the democratic process. While campaign contributions are a necessary part of the political process, any such contribution should not influence the manner in which executive or legislative power is exercised. Last year, I had for determination the matter of real-time systems versus Renoir Limited and others. The claimant's claim was for a sum of money in excess of $1.5 million, and the claimant stated that on or about August 2007, Mr. K.L., a well-known businessman, and Mr. J.W. of the First Defendant Company, a politician, agreed that K.L. would assist J.W. 
by obtaining personal loans for him, which were to be repaid in early 2008 as JW expected to receive 10 million US dollars from an international sporting association. The claimant further stated that JW agreed to secure the loans by way of promissory notes as well as the execution of a charge over a commercial building. Pursuant to the said agreement, it was the Cayman's case that the defendants received the sums claimed by virtue of five checks which were paid over several months. JW, on behalf of the defendants, admitted that the sums were paid over and received by him and that the said sums were never repaid. Contrary to the claimant's case, it was averred that the money, together with significantly larger sums, were all donations paid by the claimant's principal, KL, for the purpose of financing the 2007 general elections. The critical issue that the court had to determine was whether or not the subject sum claimed was advanced pursuant to a loan agreement or whether it amounted to a donation or gift which was made towards the financing of the 2007 electoral campaign. Throughout the evidence, the court received information as to the entrenched levels of financing which was received by a major political party from one source, sums which exceeded an alleged $40 million. In the course of the cross-examination, attorney for JW suggested to Mr. KL that in return for the contributions that he had made over the years, he was awarded numerous lucrative contracts between 2010 and 2015. The temerity with which these assertions were made before the Supreme Court of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago underscored the level of acceptance and apparent regularity with which these types of transactions occur. Taking the defendant's case at its highest, KL provided financing for the 2007 general election, and his concern was what was in it for him. According to JW, KL's investment paid off handsomely as his company was awarded major governmental contracts when the party he financed in 2007 secured the reins of governance in 2010. After the court considered the evidence in the round, as well as the documentary evidence which was adduced before me, and having weighed the plausibility of the rival contentions, there was no doubt that KL did in fact provide millions to JW to finance the 2007 general election. However, the court found on a balance of probabilities as a fact that it was more likely than not that the particular transaction claimed in the action before the court was a transaction which was founded on a loan agreement and accordingly there was judgment given in favor of the claimant. The court's finding of fact, however, has been appealed as the defendants continue to insist that the sums claimed ought not to be repaid because they represented gifts or donations for the 2007 election. This case reinforced and highlighted the significant role which campaign financiers play in our national life. Evidence was adduced to suggest 
that KL also provided significant financing to the other major political party. Evidently, the moneyed interests unashamedly hedge their bets so as to ensure that their concerns are addressed and contracts are awarded to them, irrespective of the party which captures the reins of power. The inescapable conclusion is that big business financiers inevitably get big payoffs. The position adopted by J.W., a former cabinet minister, was quite frankly unfathomable. Without hesitation or embarrassment, he stoutly defended the claim and advanced the proposition, you were repaid by the award of contracts. The fact that J.W. intrepidly gave instructions to his attorney to put to KL that he and or his companies benefited substantially from contracts between 2010 to 2015, instilled significant disquiet in the court's mind, and the court felt compelled to address the issue. Consequently, at paragraph 48 of the judgment, it was stated as follows, and I quote, money advanced to fund elections has for far too long played a central and dominant role in this republic's politics. There is an entrenched public perception that elected officials can be sold to the highest bidder and that campaign contributions are the functional equivalent of bribes, which ensure that favorable treatment is given by government to those who provide the said funds. The evidence adduced in this matter demonstrates that this perception may well be the reality which unfolds. In the absence of regulations, financiers can legitimately purchase goodwill and exercise undue influence over politicians and political parties. The insular interests of those persons may consequently be considered as relevant and or paramount considerations when executive decisions are undertaken. Such an approach to governance is untenable, unethical, and inconsistent with the oath of public office, which demands that all decisions and actions should be made freely, fairly, and in the best interest of all citizens of the Republic. The absence of campaign finance regulation has led to a culture of kickbacks and corruption, and although within the recent past some progress has been made by virtue of the enactment of procurement legislation and the appointment of a procurement board, the dire need for a proper regulatory framework has to be prioritized and campaign finance reform should be effected as a matter of urgency. Courts in a developing democracy should not in 2018 have to decide whether sums received were the spoils of campaign financing as there should be clear and cogent guidelines which regulate same. The veil of secrecy and anonymity must be removed, and there should be full disclosure as to the identity of financial contributors, with caps placed on the amounts which can be received by a political party from individuals, companies, or institutions. In addition, safeguards and or prohibitions need to be formulated with respect to the award of contracts to financiers. Tax payers money and the resources of the state do not belong to any political party and cannot be used to court 
a party's financiers. After 55 years of independence, a limit must be placed on the influence of moneyed interests in the nation's politics, end of quote. Though this judgment was delivered in May 2018, to date, with the exception of draft legislation before the parliamentary committee, there has been very little progress on the issue of finance campaign regulation. And the question, therefore, has to be asked, how serious are we about curbing corruption in this blessed republic? Sadly, it appears that the cancerous corruption associated with the absence of campaign finance regulation may evidently restrict and retard our development into the 2020 election season and beyond. Thank you.